This video continues our series on the evolution of the Spanish language from Latin. In this video, we'll discuss the emergence of the Spanish unstressed or atonic vowels. This discussion follows closely section 2.4.3 of the book A History of the Spanish Language by Ralph Penny. If you haven't watched my previous video on the evolution of Latin vowels into Spanish, I recommend you go watch it now. There are principles I discuss there that are important for understanding this video that I'm not going to repeat here. Because of the lower energy with which they were articulated in spoken Latin, the atonic vowels evolved along a different trajectory from the tonic vowels. The main difference being that in atonic syllables, short e and short o merged with their long counterparts. They did this at an early enough stage that they completely skipped all the jostling around that led to diphthongization in the tonic vowels. As a result, popular spoken Latin had only five atonic vowel phonemes, these phonemes corresponding with these classical Latin phonemes. Observe that in vulgar Latin, short i merged with long and short e, and short u merged with long and short o. Now, atonic vowels were treated differently depending on where they fell in a word. Let's take a look at a few different scenarios. First syllable in a word. When the first syllable in a Latin word was atonic, the vowel in that syllable wasn't pronounced as energetically as the tonic vowel in the word, but it was pronounced with more energy than atonic vowels in other positions. So atonic vowels in the first syllable evolved in a way something intermediate between tonic vowels and other atonic vowels. One way that they were similar to other atonic vowels is that generally speaking they underwent the same pattern of merging. We know this because ancient Roman writing preserves misspellings that follow this pattern. They're also attested in entries in the appendix proby. Here's an example of each of the ten Latin vowels in a word initial syllable and how it changed into Spanish. Of course the ones that seem most unusual to us are the ones where short i became e and short u became o. But from the point of view of native speakers of Ibero-Latin, this was no bigger a phonological change than any of the other mergers. It just seems like it to us because of how those sounds were spelled. All right, so one way that vowels in word initial atonic syllables were different from other atonic vowels and more like tonic vowels is that they underwent metaphony. In other words, when the following syllable started with a y sound, the atonic vowel in the first syllable raised a step from e to i or from o to u. Pause the video and study these examples. Final vowels. As Latin evolved into Spanish, the stress placed on the final syllable of words decreased, resulting in these syllables being pronounced with less energy. This reduction in stress led to the five atonic vowels of spoken Latin merging into just three in Spanish. Here are some examples of this reduction, one for each of the ten Latin vowel phonemes. Of course, the mergers that stand out the most are where i's and u's become e's and o's, respectively. Of the three final vowels that appear in Old Spanish, A and O have remained quite stable, with just a few changes in some limited contexts. Final E was not as stable. In texts from the 10th and 11th centuries, we observe that final E was lost in the sequence vowel-consonant E, where the consonant was R, D, N, L, or S. Observe these examples. The sequence vowel T, T, E did not result in the loss of final E. Here's an example of that. Over the next couple of centuries, certain urban educated varieties of Castilian underwent occasional loss of E in other phonetic contexts. Some authors believe that this was due to influence from French. During this period, E was lost after almost any consonant or consonant group. The forms with E never disappeared from Castilian writing, and they persisted in the speech of most people. So toward the end of the 13th century, they re-emerged in the speech of wealthy urbanites and have remained in all levels of Spanish to the present day. There are only a handful of words where the loss of E was permanent, and those are words where in Old Spanish the consonant group preceding E was ts, spelled with cesedilla. There were centuries of competition between forms with and without E, but eventually the forms without E won out. Here are some examples. Intertonic vowels. Unstressed vowels in the middle of a word underwent the greatest reduction of all Latin vowels. With the exception of A, intertonic vowels were essentially eliminated as Latin evolved into Spanish. 
Intertonic vowels began to disappear as far back as vulgar Latin, as attested by misspelled words from the Roman era and the Appendix Proby. During this stage, intertonics were lost in specific phonetic contexts, contact with R or L, sometimes with N or S. Here are some examples from the Appendix Proby. At a later stage, after Ibero-Romance had separated from other branches of Romance, almost all remaining intertonic vowels other than A disappeared. Here are some examples. As I mentioned, intertonic A survived this process. Observe these examples. Latin words with two pretonic vowels other than A lost the vowel closest to the stressed vowel. The fate of Latin diphthongs. The three Latin diphthongs, AE, OE, and AU, were reduced to simple vowels, although not all at the same rate. In spoken Latin, AE usually reduced to open E, and as we discussed in our previous video, when stressed, open E later became the diphthong IE. OE usually reduced to closed E and occasionally AE also reduced to closed E. Although there were a few cases of reduction in spoken Latin of AU to O, this change wasn't really common this early on. It wasn't until later that reduction of AU to O became regular in Spanish. The fate of Latin hiatuses. In Latin, when two vowels appeared side by side that were not AE, OE, or AU, those vowels constituted a hiatus, which means that they were pronounced as separate syllables. In the transition to Spanish, Latin hiatuses underwent two types of change. The loss of the weaker vowel, and more commonly, the formation of a diphthong. Observe these examples where the weaker vowel was lost. With regard to the formation of diphthongs, the appendix proby attests to the total confusion of these front vowels and these back vowels in hiatuses. Now, there are some topics related to vowels we haven't discussed in these videos, but I think the topics we have covered are the most relevant and interesting, and so I think I'll wrap up here. In my next video in this series, I'll begin talking about the evolution of Latin to Spanish consonants.